Ben Shapiro, the political commentator, just became Ben Shapiro, the political comedian. Let's go ahead and watch this video so you can see how funny he is as he cracks jokes about Cory Booker. Uh, you gotta love Mr. Potato Head over here. He didn't just bring his angry eyes, he brought his concerned eyes. And, um, and Cory Booker, if there's one person who can make Kamala Harris look not rehearsed, it is, it is Cory Booker. He makes her look spontaneous and joyous. Cory Booker is the most rehearsed politician I have ever seen in my entire life. He is perhaps the most irritating politician. I've, I mean, and I watch politicians for a living. This dude is as irritating as itching powder in your eyes. I mean, this guy is just nails on a chalkboard irritating. Here is Cory Booker, who is very upset that a vote is even going to be held on Amy Coney Barrett. You can tell he's upset because he uses both his upset eyes. He brought his angry eyes. He takes out his upset eyes, pops him in, blinks a lot. Very upset, Cory Booker. And then he just repeats things over and over. He repeats Beetlejuice until Michael Keaton randomly appears in the well of the Senate. Here was uh, Cory Booker being obnoxious. What is going on in America today in the midst of a deadly pandemic and an ongoing election, having a rushed Supreme Court nomination hearing is not normal and we cannot normalize it. People are voting right now. The American people should decide. The American people should decide. The American people should decide. I will not be voting to confirm Judge Barrett's nomination. Okay, either Cory Booker is the most emotional person who has ever been in American politics, or he's completely unemotional and he's kind of a sociopath. <laughs> and, uh, and Ben laughing at his own joke like that is honestly funnier than the actual joke. Let's go ahead and watch that one more time. Who's ever been in American politics, or he's completely unemotional and he's kind of a sociopath. <laughs> that weasel laugh of Ben Shapiro. No, and there's some things that he says that are sometimes reasonable, and he's good at trying to give off the appearance that he's very logical, that he's very reasonable, that he'll criticize people on the right. But when it comes down to it, he is a partisan hack. So he makes fun of Cory Booker without actually going into the substance of what Cory said. The idea that the American people should decide this is what was being pushed by Mitch McConnell in 2016 when they refused to vote on Merrick Garland. And that was when they had literally like 10 months until the election. They had so much time until the election. And in this situation, this is literally being crammed through like two weeks, three weeks before this 2020 election. So the rank self-serving hypocrisy is so evident and so obvious to the American people. Ben laughing at his joke there. Uh, keep in mind when Cory Booker says the American people should decide, there are more people, according to polls in America, that believe that this election, uh, just understand, like with this election, that the Supreme Court voting on the, no or the, voting on the Supreme Court nominee, it should happen after the fact feel like the latter because every time I'm so upset, the American people should decide. Tinkerbell should live. Amy Coney Barrett shouldn't be on the court. Clap until Tinkerbell lives, Corey. Clap, clap, Spartacus, clap. It's a Spartacus moment. Tinkerbell's living. We're doing it. Yeah, it's not happening. Amy Coney Barrett is going to the court. So uh, congratulations, Corey Booker. And meanwhile, Dick Durbin is saying that it is, it is a self-serving proposal. This is the senator from Illinois, uh, who again, once called American soldiers akin to Pol Pot. I, I remember this. Uh, senator Durbin says it's self-serving for Republicans to fill the seat. After all, they didn't fill the seat with Merrick Garland. Yes, because they weren't going to vote for Merrick Garland because they disagree with his judicial philosophy. Senator Durbin. Here is Durbin, again, doing this routine. We can't win the vote, so there shouldn't be a vote. People had already begun casting votes. And my Republican colleagues marched in front of the cameras, looked down at their shoes, dutifully reversed their positions, and lined up obediently behind their leader again. Gets down to this. Either the American people do get an election year voice regarding a vacancy on the Supreme Court, or they don't. In 2016, Senator McConnell said, give them a voice. Now he says, don't give them a voice. It is a shameless, self-serving, venal reversal. Okay, um, just a note. It's also a shameless, self-serving, venal reversal that you all said that Merrick Garland should get a vote, and now you say that Amy Coney Barrett should, should not. Pat Leahy, most famous for having a cameo in, uh, the, in the Batman movies. I hear, hear Senator Leahy from Vermont saying the same thing. They're breaking their word. They're breaking. You guys are pledging to, to, to pack the Supreme Court guys and kill the filibuster. I think that them, quote unquote, breaking their word. They didn't give their word that they were never going to vote on a Republican nominee. They said when the parties are controlled, parties control different branches in an election year, then you should wait for that to be decided by the American public. 
I think it's a dumb principle. Okay, keep in mind that he was being fairly misleading when he talked about Senator Dick Durbin referring to American soldiers as Pol Pot. Um, he was talking about interrogators at Guantanamo Bay specifically, which now we know they were torturing uh, sometimes innocent people. So that comment's really not so wild when you put it in context and realize he wasn't calling all American soldiers that. He was saying those torturing at Guantanamo Bay. Again, Ben Shapiro, though, loves to omit information that doesn't help him out. Well, I don't think you have to vote on anybody you don't want to. You're the Senate of the United States. But uh, Democrats are trying to hang their head on this. We shouldn't be holding a hearing three weeks from a presidential election when millions of Americans have already voted. Now when doing so requires that literally half of the Senate goes back on their word. Think of that, my Republican colleagues. Literally half of the Senate had to break their word contradicting every argument they made four years ago about the American people needing a voice during election year vacancies. Okay, so screaming at the sky and whining about a perfectly traditional process. Again, there have been more than a dozen. I think the, the statistic was close to 20 people who have been nominated during an election year. And usually when the parties... Yeah, who in there was actually screaming at the sky? Showed two senators who made their point extremely calmly extremely rationally and instead of actually addressing what they're saying he accuses them of screaming at the sky there have been occasion and there have been occasional things that ben shapiro has said that i uh, might find somewhat agreeable maybe on topics uh, relating to race once in a while or transgenderism once in a while not all the time uh but just recognize that Ben Shapiro, he looks really smart as he goes out and debates undergraduate college students. If he were to actually sit down and debate Cory Booker, it probably wouldn't look that great. If he were to debate someone like Sam Harris or Yuval Harari or potentially even Andrew Yang, even someone like Kyle Kalinske, if he was to debate someone who is really well informed, it wouldn't be that impressive. Uh, he debated Cenk Uger a few years back at Politicon, and Cenk did great against him. Ben Shapiro is someone that seems really smart and seems really great, especially if you're not that informed yourself. But the more history and the more politics, the more psychology that you actually understand, uh, it's easy to see through Ben Shapiro and see that he is simply a partisan hack. He's no Kyle Kalinske of the right. So to go along with that point, I made a video of this a while back, uh, but Ben Shapiro, he at one point stormed off the set after he was being interviewed by a conservative uh, with the BBC. And so in this interview, uh, the conservative is asking him some specific questions. And at one point, uh, Ben Shapiro tries to just say that he's a biased member of the left right there at the bottom. And the guy just started laughing and said that Shapiro didn't know what he was talking about. Uh, but this guy's actually like a so prominent conservative who had worked for Rupert Murdoch. And the idea though, of like Ben Shapiro being this genius, he didn't even do his homework on this guy that he was about to debate. Of course he looks like a genius when he's debating college students all day. And then Ben Shapiro ends up getting flustered and claims, I'm not inclined to continue an interview with someone as badly motivated as you. Here is that point in the interview right here. And I asked you a question. You failed to answer a single one of mine. Frankly, I find this whole thing a waste of time. If you want to read the book and critique the book, why don't you read and critique the book? If you want to read, if you want to critique me, you can think whatever you want of me. Why don't you frankly, just try and I don't answer care. the I don't, questions? I don't frankly give a damn what you, you think of me because I've never you, heard of you. You, and I've never heard of you until I briefed myself for this, but that's not the issue. You have a then new book why the book hell are you interviewing and it's, me, an in, it's an interesting book. But my point is your book claims that Well, it'd be society, nice if you would quote it from time to time. Your book is, well, actually, I've done so several times and I'm about to do so again if you would let me just finish the question. Your book frankly, claims I don't think that society you know what? Honestly, is turning honestly, its back sir, 
on Judeo-Christian values. Yeah, this is, what are those values? What, that it's, what, what are the values it's turning its back on? I, I you know, I, I'm not inclined to continue an interview with a person as badly motivated as you as an interviewer. So I think we're done here. I appreciate your time. All sir. right. Thank well, so uh, thank you for your time and uh, for showing that anger is not part of American political discourse. Now, Mr. To his own credit, he does admit that he was destroyed in that debate. He says that he broke his own rule. So credit to him for admitting that. But again, just wanted to highlight like Ben Shapiro. He's not this great enlightenment thinker. He's not this next level genius. He's good at recycling talking points. Uh, he's good at making ideas that are already popular among people sound good and concert and uh, defending some people's values. But he's not this great genius. You're going to see him try to distance himself from Trump as he maybe feels that that ship is sinking, but just recognize the types of people that got Trump elected, the types of ideas that Trump supporters agree with. Uh, ben Shapiro feeds into that whole cycle and that whole community, and he did not, he doesn't call Trump out enough on the things that are necessary. So for example, Trump saying that he won't uh, concede power because it's going to be rigged. Ben Shapiro, if he loves the Constitution so much, should be all over calling Trump out for something like that. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe.